Hi, welcome to the Good News Ministries course on how to find God in times of waiting. I'd like to start out this series by just giving you an overview of the people who have signed up with you to participate in this course. There are 41 people who've signed up. 20 of you are waiting for others to change through conversion, returning to the faith, or other important changes that will make for a better relationship with you. Five of these spoke of problems with waiting on somebody to enter into recovery from alcoholism and or drugs. Two reported having uh, loved ones who are engaging in the world's understanding and, and uh, acceptance of and lifestyle of homosexuality and gender identity. Three are waiting for children to hear and follow their calling from God. One is hoping to be able to pray with their spouse as a couple. One said that they're waiting for family unity. Seven of you are waiting for financial security, some in regards to finding a job or getting a better job. One of these is trying to balance earning money with family life. One person is waiting for retirement. Another is waiting to be able to move into a good house. Four of you are waiting to find the right spouse. One is waiting for a son or a daughter to find the right spouse. Two are waiting for the restoration of a marriage relationship. One is waiting for healing in a parish, healing from parish division caused by a priest and waiting for justice to come to that situation. Four of you are waiting for to find the time to have a better prayer life, uh, spend more time reading the scriptures, a stronger experience of God. One of these people is waiting and hoping to stop worrying and to trust God more. One is waiting for an increase of faith. One is waiting for the sense of guilt to be healed. Two of you are waiting to have a baby. Two are waiting for a physical healing. And seven are waiting to discern God's calling and purposes for your life. Two of these are in particular waiting to either pursue a higher degree of education or to receive certification by taking an exam. And one of these is waiting for, one of these seven who are waiting to hear God's calling on their lives is waiting for opportunities to use the gifts of the Holy Spirit. This gives you an idea of the people who are joining you in this class. In the coming sessions, I'm going to go much more specifically into these types of what people are waiting for, but I'd like to start out today by talking about my own learning process of waiting for God. There was a time in my life many, many years ago uh, when my children were very young that I nearly lost my faith altogether. It was because I was waiting for God to answer a prayer. We lived in a house that was in a bad neighborhood and our two children came along and were starting to get old enough to want to play outside and want to play with the neighbor's kids. And it was a dangerous street to live on. It was not a very good influence, that particular neighborhood. And Ralph and I dreamed of moving to a house in a much better neighborhood with more property around us so that the kids could play and, and, and just be a better environment to raise the kids in. It was a time when the real estate market was booming. People were selling their houses practically overnight. The atheist down the street sold his house in just two days. So I figured that if we put the matter into God's hands, if we prayed about it, 
we would sell our house just as easily, if not faster. <laughs> it's got to be an advantage to be to praying, right? It's got to be it's got, asking God for help. It's got to be better than the atheist, you know, and and how he deals with the challenges of life. Well, eight months later, I was still praying for our house to sell so that we could move to another neighborhood. We even picked out a house that we wanted to buy and something in the wait fell apart. We couldn't get that house. We found another house. During the wait, someone else put a contract on that house and it looked like, I don't know, it just looked like God had abandoned us. That's really what it felt like. God had abandoned us. And the more that time went on, the worse this felt. I mean, I couldn't even go to Mass anymore without wanting to cry because it was like the, the scripture readings. We're all talking about how God helps people, but other people, not me. It, the, the, the songs of Mass, the homilies, the prayers of Mass, it was all about God's help for everybody but me and my family. And literally, it got to the point where I could not sit through Mass without crying unless I distracted myself. In those days, I was doing a lot of needle pointing. So I literally envisioned in my mind a needlepoint project that I was designing that I was going to make later. And if it weren't for having little children that we were trying to influence in the faith, we would have stopped going to Mass altogether probably because I was just an emotional wreck. I came this close to losing my faith. I mean, when I got this close after eight months of still trying to sell our house and praying and trusting God for it, I was so close to entirely losing my faith that I said, I need to get help. And so I called up this nun that worked out of my parish and said, I need to talk. So I went over and she listened to my, my story. She listened to my angst, my tears, and she said a number of things, but there was one thing that was the key that I needed to hear. And I didn't understand it right away. She said that we project unto God the human traits that we've experienced from other people, especially people who are role models of God. But, but anybody who we encounter on earth is meant to be a representation of God, just as we're meant to be a representation of God for others, right? But she kept saying, we project unto God. And I was therefore projecting unto God human traits as I've experienced from people. Uh, we had some friends who were supposedly in a bonded covenant relationship with us. Our families, there was two other families. The three families were supposed to be committed to each other, to pray together, to be there for each other. And there was a time when that didn't happen when I really needed it to. I got sick with the flu and at the time I had one baby and he was at the crawling stage where he could get up under things and get into trouble, get into danger. And I could barely get off the couch without throwing up. And my husband, Ralph, though he wanted to stay home to take care of us, had to work that day, had to leave. So I called up one of these people from our, our special friends, our group of friends, the one who was at home. And I said, could you come over and help me out? Could you take my son, David, to your house or something? Because I can't take care of him today. And she said, no, I can't. I've got to make dinner for my husband. Now, mind you, this was early in the afternoon. And, you know, she could make dinner later. She could pick up my son, take her to a house and make dinner for her husband. In other words, her answer did not satisfy me. It didn't make any sense. It just felt like she was abandoning me. And in fact, she was. As I was recalling this memory on my way home from talking to the nun, I heard God. It was an inner voice, but it was strong. It was clear. And the message was, 
I am not a friend like that. I am a true friend, capital T, capital F. I am a true friend. And with that, I suddenly knew the difference. I was healed. I differentiated human beings from God. And that made all the difference. I was filled with peace from that knowledge. And it took another month for me to experience that. It, our house finally sold a month after that. It wasn't God that was abandoning me. It just felt like it. And when I knew the difference, when I consciously thought of the difference, I lived very peacefully, full of faith for the rest of the waiting period. A whole month, which proved to me that it was real, that my change within me was real. And I share this story with you because that lesson changed my life. And some of you listening to this now, it can change your life too. What is your reason to be mad at God or frustrated, wondering is he ever gonna answer your prayers? Uh, what is bothering you in your relationship with God as you're waiting for whatever it is that you're waiting on? Whatever is a human trait that other people have modeled, that other people have exhibited, God is not like that. God is better than that. He is a true friend. And whatever the reason for the wait, it's because he's working a plan for your good as well as the good of the other people who are involved. And you can trust him in that. Thank you for listening. I look forward to sharing the next session with you. God bless you.